when we have conversations with any vendor or any partner, we make sure that uh, their product supports OpenStack. Because if it doesn't, it doesn't fit our strategy. If there's an external provider that we want to work with, as long as they're running OpenStack, we know that we can use them. Even if they weren't initially uh, part of the movement, they all have seemed to come into the movement. We're always expecting when we talk to a new vendor or an existing vendor, we're expecting them to participate equally in OpenStack and then contribute their interfaces and make their uh, software uh, work within the pluggable architecture of OpenStack. It helps solidify maybe the partner approach where it's not just a vendor and a customer, but when both, both parties are involved in making the same thing better, um, I think it opens it up to some, some stronger relationships and some better conversations. One of the primary reasons we did that, made that move, was so that we could leverage all of the tools and capabilities of all of the third party software, open source software, that operates in that ecosystem. And I can use all those tools for my internal deployments. I can leverage all this stuff. I don't have to build it myself. I don't have to go to a, a specific vendor. That you know, cloud is is bigger than any one given vendor. Um, therefore, it takes a platform that's open, uh, like OpenStack, um, to be bigger than that because it, it needs to it needs to reach across. In the past, when an interface had been written with a specific vendor or a specific vendor's code was so integrated into our systems, it was hard to change to others. But given the pluggable architecture of OpenStack, we are now able to bring in more vendors.